Hey guys, welcome to part four of the ultimate weight loss plan. This is part four of four. We have finally made it to the final episode in this series where we're looking at how to lose weight and keep that weight off. Now, all of the information in this video is scientifically backed up. It's all from the NHS and the British Dietetics Association, which is great because you know it's safe and trustworthy. Now, if you haven't watched episodes one, two, and three prior to this one, I would highly recommend that you do so. In those episodes, we talk about things like portion sizing, we talk about things like bulking up your breakfast, bulking up your meals, healthier restaurant and takeaway choices, and loads more. You see, this whole series has been designed for you to work through the episodes, so I would highly recommend that you watch those first prior to starting on this one. I will leave links to them up here and in the description below. Now before we begin, please do remember that this weight loss series has been designed for adults and adults with a BMI of over 25. Now if you're thinking to yourself, what's my BMI? Well, not to worry. I'm gonna leave a BMI calculator in the description below. Feel free to check it out so you can make sure that your BMI is above that before you start this diet plan. Another thing that you really need to do before you start any diet plan is speak to your healthcare professional. Speak to your healthcare professional, make them aware of it, make them aware that you want to do this just so that it gives you the thumbs up that you can do it because some people shouldn't be doing these kinds of diet plans. So hopefully you've watched the previous episodes of this series and you know how it's all going to work but in case you forgot here's a simple reminder I'm going to try my best to make these videos as simple and easy as possible for you to follow. Each video, so each episode, is gonna be a three week challenge. So this video, part four, we're working from week 10 to 12. And the box is gonna pop up here, and it's gonna give you a bit of a breakdown of what we're gonna work through in this episode. And before we begin, I appreciate this is going to be a pretty long video, so if you wanna find any specific information, like all of my videos, I am gonna leave a timestamp in the description below. If you wanna find any specific information, feel free to go in the description, find what you want, but I'd highly recommend that you watch the entire video and become a weight loss pro. Now let's begin. Okay, so welcome to week 10. First of all, a huge congratulations to you, the viewer who's been following these videos and hopefully you've been losing weight, you're feeling great, and you've had that determination, that motivation to make this change because only you can do that. You decide to click on a video, you decide to make a change, so congratulations and sending awesome vibes to you. Let me know how you've been getting on with the video so far, what have you found easy, what have you found hard. Leave a comment below because I'd love to read it. I'm sure everyone watching this video would too. Okay, so let's begin with challenge number one. It's all about preventing unhealthy food temptations. We did talk about this very slightly a few weeks ago in the other video, but that was more about preventing temptations then and there, when you have that sort of craving. We've discussed things like brushing your teeth, chewing gum, drinking water. But now I wanna talk about actually preventing you from having those thoughts in the first place and talking through techniques that we can do. So for example, when you do your food shop, make a shopping list beforehand and prepare yourself to stick to it. Write out all the items that you need and assess whether any junk food on it is necessary. If it's not necessary, then remove it and replace it with better alternatives. Now sticking to a shopping list can be really, really helpful to prevent those temptations, to prevent you from buying those unhealthy foods. Look, we've all been there. You're in the supermarket, you see those colorful packagings, you're hungry as well on the day, and you end up buying loads of junk. So be prepared, that is the most important thing. Have your list and stick to the list. And this doesn't mean depriving yourself of snacks or food, by the way. So make sure that on your shopping list, you account for stocking up on healthy snacks and ingredients. If at home you have a cupboard or fridge full of healthy options readily available, you are much more likely to go for these when you're hungry. Moving on nicely to the next tip for this challenge. Look, if you do have junk food at home, be sure to keep it out of sight. This can be really, really helpful, especially when you're having those temptations. So if you do have some junk food, if you have some biscuits, whatever it is, put it somewhere which isn't as accessible as it usually would be. So don't put it in your bottom drawer so it's easily accessible. Put it somewhere on your top shelf or something where it's a lot harder for you to get. Same applies for ice cream, for example. If you've got ice cream in your freezer, keep it towards the back of the shelf, okay? Don't have it right on the front when you open it up so you're seeing it, because that's just asking for that temptation to rise. And the same applies for things that you buy in bulk. Let's say, for example, you buy a multi-pack of crisps and you've got them on your kitchen counter or somewhere that's very accessible it's going to be far more likely that you're going to grab some crisps out of there 
then if you store them separately, somewhere discreet, in your garage, wherever, and then you only keep one bag of crisps out that you're gonna have as a real treat or that you plan to have as well. Now this is much easier when the food items are actually individually wrapped, like the crisps for example, but when they're not and you're getting a large bulk amount, it can be quite difficult. And like we said earlier, it's not just fast food places that are making their portion sizes bigger, supermarkets are doing the same as well. Portion sizes are getting much bigger, which is why it's super important. If you haven't watched episode one, where we talk about portion sizing and the importance of it, then please do watch that, because this is gonna come in really, really handy. But there are things that you can do, however, if you are getting large portion size things when you're buying them, which are individually wrapped. For example, let's say if you're getting a, a pack of donuts, which has got a dozen donuts in there. So, to avoid the temptation of eating quite a few donuts, which is possible, by the way, try to wrap them up individually yourself. So pack them out individually so you know, this is my portion, this is my serving. Or another example would be to empty out a portion of large crisp packet into a bowl rather than eating it straight from the bag. This can help remove the temptation to keep eating just because it's available to you in one go. It's important to note, however, that this technique isn't appropriate for all food types, so please do read the instructions that come with that food, whether you can pack them separately and store them exactly how it tells you to do so. Now, another top tip for this weekly challenge is please, please never shop when you are hungry. If you shop when you're hungry, your brain naturally makes you pick those bad choices that we don't want to do. It's gonna make you go down that sugary aisle. It's gonna make you go down that high saturated foods aisle. And you're gonna, you're gonna end up picking unhealthy food choices which we really don't want and we want to reserve and stop those temptations from picking these foods. So please, do not shop when you're hungry. So from this week onwards, we now know we need to not shop when we're hungry. We now know we need to try and pack our foods into smaller portion sizes. We also know we need to move about certain foods that are unhealthy and make the healthier ones more readily available. And we've also discussed many other things that are gonna help with those temptations. Now moving on to challenge number two. This is all about keeping a food diary. Now this can be with a good old pen and paper in the form of a notebook, or you can even do it on your phone via the notes app. In this, you want to write about what food you ate, when you ate it, and how hungry you were using a scale of one to 10. Now this can be a really great way to help you identify your eating patterns and also to see when and why you may have strayed away from your healthy routine. So for example, with a food diary, you can see, do you eat more unhealthy food at work? Do you eat more unhealthy food on the weekends with friends? Are your breakfast choices letting you down or is it your lunch? Or even, have you been doing amazingly and it's about time you gave yourself a non-food treat? Logging these notes can be a great way to not only keep track of your progress, but to also identify problem spots. Now when you are filling your diary, it is super important that you're honest with yourself. Look, it can be quite overwhelming writing everything that you're eating down, but I promise you it can be really, really helpful, especially if you're someone who's struggling to lose weight. If you can't understand why you're not losing weight, because you're doing all the right things. By doing this, writing down exactly what you've eaten, writing down with, and thinking whether it's healthy or unhealthy, and seeing how you feel, we can really start to see a pattern emerging, and it can be really, really helpful for you. And another tip whilst you're doing this, please also write down what you're drinking. Remember, in week nine, where we spoke about just how many calories things like alcohol and certain types of coffee and juices have, well, because of that, make sure you log these too. If from your diary, you can see that Friday evening is a trigger for a glass of wine, or Monday morning is when you're guilty of a mocha, you can start to plan on how you can work around these with healthier alternatives, which we discussed previously. And by the way, I will leave some useful links in the description below if you want a diary with the questions as well there's some really useful ones there so check it out in case you want to transfer them onto your phone or whatever okay so moving on to week number 11 firstly do let me know how you got on with week number 10 where are you hiding those unhealthy foods and also how are you getting on with that food diary please leave a comment below I'd love to read it and I'm sure everyone else is watching it would love to read it too to get some advice 
from the whole team and group on YouTube that are watching it. Now your first challenge for this week is to identify comfort eating. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what on earth is comfort eating? It's also known as emotional eating. It's what we do when we choose some things such as food to replace those negative feelings that we're having at the moment. Now comfort eating can affect anyone, but studies have shown that it can affect women more than men. It can be in response to any negative feeling, including anger, sadness, anxiety, frustration or guilt. And ironically, eating in response to these feelings can then fuel a cycle leading to more guilt and then more food. Now lastly, we discussed starting a food diary. And food diaries can be really helpful to identify comfort eating. All you need to do is on that diary, put a note on how you're feeling. Were you happy? Were you sad? Were you angry? How were you feeling on that day when you were eating that food? It's important to then keep a track of your food diary and see, you might be able to see a correlation actually this day when I go to work and I have to deal with X, Y, Z, I'm angry and then I end up comfort eating. I end up having those bad unhealthy foods and you might be able to take steps to make changes to prevent that from happening. So it's really important that you always look at the diary and look for correlations and patterns. Now some common triggers include financial worries, family arguments, boredom, work stress, bad weather and loneliness. Now even though there is no quick fix for these life troubles and emotions, identifying triggers can help help you learn how to not associate them with food, which is what I'm going to go through in just a bit. Now on a side note, keeping this mood diary within your food diary can also be an important factor to consider if your mood is constantly low. If you're noticing that actually my mood is quite low, this should be a time to seek help. Speak to your healthcare professional, let them know how you're feeling and let them have a consultation with you. This is really important and don't just shy away from it. If you're seeing this, if you're seeing it on your diary, speak to someone. Now moving on to challenge number two of this week, we've identified comfort eating, but now we're gonna discuss what we can do to prevent it. So let's start. Now a really good way to avoid comfort eating is every time you want to eat something, just stop and think to yourself, am I actually hungry? Is it my body wanting the food? Or am I just trying to mask these emotions? Am I just trying to stop how I'm feeling right now, these negative feelings with food? You can then wait half an hour, and if the urge to eat has gone away, it could be that it's an emotional comfort that you're needing rather than food. And if this is the case, find something non-food related that can help with how you're feeling right now. You could phone a friend, you could have a relaxing bath, you could go for a run, you could listen to some music, dance around, do something to occupy yourself, to replace those feelings with something positive, not just food. And reaching out can be a really good way to avoid comfort eating. So pick up that phone, ring a friend, let them know how you're feeling, discuss it, have a chat. And that's also gonna let that half an hour pass as well. And you might completely forget about it. And again, it could just be that comfort eating that you've just now passed. Now, if you're unable to reach out, exercise can also be a great way to both diffuse and prevent negative emotions. The brain chemicals released during exercise have been shown to help lead to better self-esteem, better sleep, better energy levels and mood. It's even thought to reduce your risk of stress and depression too. So next time you feel like eating for comfort, try a walk or some gentle yoga as a way to get those feel better chemicals instead. Okay, so if you've got this far, we have finally made it now to week 12. And if you've made it to week 12, studies have shown that if you do something for 12 weeks, you're far more likely to take on those habits. So these lifestyle changes that we've gone through, you are far more likely to keep them. And hopefully, we're gonna keep with the weight loss, but most importantly, we're gonna keep that weight off long term. Now for the final part of this diet plan, it's all about setting you up to continue this journey long term to prevent that weight gain from coming back on so that we can stay at steady weight. So what I'm gonna do in this last part, so from week 12 onwards, we're gonna help you continue in it. And also we're gonna go through some frequent FAQs, some frequently asked questions to help you with any things that might not make too much sense. So let's begin with that. So the first question is, do I have to keep up low calorie eating? And the answer to that is, Yes, in order for us to keep that weight steady and to prevent you from gaining weight, you need to keep up the low calorie eating that we have discussed throughout this series. And if you go back to your old ways of eating, unhealthy ways of eating, you are probably most likely gonna put on weight again and the whole cycle continues again of having to go on a diet to lose weight and then it's gonna keep on happening. So we need to stay 
on the plan. You need to keep up with healthy eating. If you're gonna go out to a restaurant, make those healthy choices. If you're gonna have a takeaway now and then, make those healthy choices. You know what to do. We've gone through the plan together. You know what you need to do to eat healthy. The next common frequently asked question or comment that we hear is, I'm finding eating healthy boring. I miss my old diet. So. This is quite normal. When you're following a strict diet like this, you can start to feel low. You can start to feel a bit bored of the whole diet, but it's super important to remember it's all about switching things up, you know, changing things with time as well. So not following the exact same thing that you're doing. Speak to other people, look at the comments below in these videos, see if anyone's got any tips and tricks, join some forums or some great ideas that you can get. Or you can buy a new cookbook or change your exercise routine, maybe buy some new spices to create some healthy new recipes with, or try some fruit and vegetables from different parts of the world. I think the most important thing is all about switching it up. Make sure you're not doing the exact same routine day in, day out, otherwise we're all gonna be bored. You know, let's say for example, you go for a walk twice a week. Don't go the exact same route twice a week. Switch it up, maybe walk after work. That's a new place to work or walk a different route or go for a run on a different route or join a different exercise class. It's all about switching things up. This is probably one of the most important things in life. Even if you're having a normal diet, which is unhealthy and you're having the exact same thing every day, you're gonna end up hating it. So it's super important that we're switching things up, speaking to people, getting ideas from other people and incorporating these things into our life. So, are you making sure you're having breakfast? A good breakfast can keep you fueled for hours and help manage your hunger. And if you're having breakfast, what type of foods are you eating throughout the rest of the day? Are you still managing to eat lots of fiber? Remember, we discussed this in our previous video. And if you find that you're still hungry quite often, try bulking up your food with low calorie, high fiber content. So for example, some high fiber foods include apricots, nuts, peas, spinach, sweet corn, wholemeal rice, wholemeal bread, and wholemeal pasta. Moving on to frequently asked question number four. I lost a bit of weight, but now I'm not losing anymore. What do I do? It's normal to reach something that we call Call a weight loss plateau. This is where you've been able to lose weight, but then as your body gets used to its new routine, weight loss can start to stall. Now this can be frustrating, but it's a normal part of weight loss process. Don't be discouraged and just keep up what you're doing. As long as you're burning more calories than you eat, your weight loss will start again. You can always try some new activities or increase the level of activities that you're doing to help stop your body from adjusting its metabolism to that. And don't forget, all of the benefit that you get from changing your diet and lifestyle isn't always reflected solely on the scales. Scales only give you one measurement, which is how much you weigh, but it doesn't take into account how your body shape has changed, how you may have clothing fit you differently now, how your energy levels have increased, or how much muscle you may have built up. And with increased exercise, you may have changed some of that fat into muscle, which isn't gonna reflect on the scales. So don't worry if the numbers aren't going down as much as you want. All of these factors you have to consider. And always remember that you've done fantastically to lose the weight that you've done so far. Weight loss plateaus always happen, but eventually following the right diet, following the right advice, following the exercise and everything that we've discussed in this video, that thing will happen. Your weight will reduce, your body shape will change, you will start feeling great, your stamina will increase, and all these things will come with time. And moving on to the last FAQ, number five, I've been trying everything, but I think I need more help. What are my options? Look, if you've been trying to lose weight and you feel like you need more help, there are many other options available. For example, get in touch with your healthcare professional and they should be able to help you with tailored advice to your circumstances. They may also be able to help find out if there's anything preventing your weight loss, such as underlying health conditions. There are also lots of weight loss groups that you can join, some of these have regular local sessions which can help keep you motivated and others have content all available online. Search for one that's suitable for you and these can also support your weight loss journey. Searching for a personal trainer or a dietitian can also be really, really helpful. All you need to do is just Google it. I will leave more information in the description below for you as well. Now, everybody's bodies are different and there's no one size diet that fits everyone. So it's super important to remember, I'm gonna go through it again. This video is for adults only with a BMI of over 25. It's gonna be a little box that pops up here now. 
read it, make sure you speak to your healthcare professional as well before you start any diet so they can check that you're suitable to start the diet. That is the most important thing. Now it is important to lose weight if you are overweight, but if you're not overweight, there's no need to lose weight. And if you're finding that you are trying to lose weight and your BMI is under 25 and you still want to lose more and more weight, please do speak to a healthcare professional about this. I'm gonna have some information pop up here. Please read it because if you're having any of these thought, these kinds of thoughts, you need to speak to a healthcare professional. That is the most important thing. So that is the end of this four part series on how to lose weight, how to lose belly fat, and how to keep that weight from coming back on. I really hope that you found this information helpful. It's been a long series. There's been a lot of information to take in, so feel free to go back, watch whichever video you want, find the information you want, and learn it. Please do let us know how you've got on. Leave a comment below on this video or on any of the other videos. I'd love to read it. I'm sure everyone watching this video would love to read it too. That's the end of this week's video. Always remember you're awesome and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.